Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here for an introduction to the reduction of order method for solving second order differential equations. So obviously as the name suggests, this method gives us a way to reduce the order of an equation. So we're reducing a second order equation basically to a first order equation, making a substitution. In order to use this method, we're actually required to know one solution from the fundamental set of solutions. So let's say you know one solution from the fundamental set, but you don't know the other. And we can use reduction of order to get the overall solution then. So in the second order equation, if we call the solution that we already know y1, then our solution is going to be y equals u times y1. u is just going to be some other function of x. Once we know u, then we have the entire solution because we already know y1. And our method for solving with reduction of order is just going to be to substitute u times y1 into the equation and all of its derivatives. You may have a y prime term and certainly a y double prime term. So you'll substitute those things into the differential equation and be able to reduce it to a first order equation. We're going to work through the method once with you, explaining as we go what's going on. So I have x squared y double prime plus 3xy prime plus y equal to zero. That's my second order equation. It's homogeneous here. Now we're given that the function 1 over x is a solution for this equation. That's our y1 that we're given. So we're going to go ahead and remember, think about y equals u times y1. That's the substitution we're going to make. So in this case, we're going to say y is equal to u times 1 over x. That will take care of a substitution for that. I still don't know y prime and y double prime, so I'll need to get those. So if y is u times 1 over x, y prime, now be careful, these are both functions of x, so this is going to be a product rule. So we'll actually get u prime times 1 over x as first part of the product rule. u times the derivative of 1 over x squared, which is actually negative 1 over x squared. So if we wanted, we could go ahead and say u prime times 1 over x minus u times 1 over x squared. So that will be our substitution for y prime and then y double prime. If we look at these, both of these are going to be a product rule again, right? So the derivative of u prime 1 over x is going to be u double prime times 1 over x plus u prime times the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared minus, now we have the derivative of this second part, right? So derivative of u would be u prime times 1 over x squared plus, leave u alone, times the derivative of 1 over x squared is going to be negative 2 over x cubed. And we'll go ahead and clean this up a bit as well. So we'll say u prime times 1 over x. Here I have minus u prime over x squared and another minus u prime over x squared, so we actually get minus u prime times 2 over x squared, and then minus and negative here we get plus u times 2 over x cubed. Okay, so we have something to plug in for y prime, so now we'll go ahead and plug all of this information in and see what happens. So if I plug that in to my original equation, I'll get x squared times plugging this in for y double prime would be u double prime 1 over x minus u prime 2 over x squared plus u times 2 over x cubed. So that's the first term plus 3x y prime, so 3x. Then we'll plug in what we got for y prime, which was u prime 1 over x minus u 1 over x squared. And then our last term is just plus y, so just what we started with, plus u times 1 over x equal to 0. And I know this is a solution, so it's supposed to give me a true statement. At this point, once you've plugged in, you want to go ahead and simplify. And what will happen is, if you've done this correctly, you'll get all of the u terms reducing to 0. So let's go ahead and think about distributing these things here. So if we distribute x squared, we would get u double prime x, x squared divided by x here, minus, if we take x squared times this here, we'll actually get 2u prime plus u times x squared times this here would give us 2 over x plus, let's go ahead and distribute our 3x, so 3x times that we would get rid of the x, we would get 3u prime Distributing the 3x here, we would get minus, we would get u times 3 over x, 
plus u times 1 over x equal to 0. And if you look at all the u terms here, we have u times 2 over x plus another 1 over x times u, so that's 3 over x minus 3 over x times u, so those all add up to 0. Right, so you'll notice what we have when we combine our like terms here, our u prime terms. We end up with u double prime x minus 2u prime plus 3u prime would be plus u prime is equal to 0. Okay, so a couple of things right here. So when you get to this point, now we need to know what to do to solve this because it's still a second order equation. We haven't reduced anything, although we got rid of our u terms. So this is the part where we reduce the order of the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to let, at this point, once we've gotten rid of all our u terms, we're going to let v equal u prime. And if we do that, a couple of things could happen depending on what you started with. So first thing, if you started with a homogeneous equation, which we did here because our right side was equal to zero, if you do that and you make this substitution at this point, this will become a separable equation, separable first order equation. If you started with a non-homogeneous equation, then your equation will become a first order linear equation. You'll have to use an integrating factor. Okay, so we had a homogeneous equation, so we know this should become separable. So if I plug in v for u prime, well, I know certainly this becomes v here. But what does u double prime become? Well, it becomes v prime, right? If v is u prime, then the derivative of each of these would mean v prime is u double prime. So we get v prime x plus v is equal to zero. If we want to think about separating the variables, you might think of this like dv dx times x plus v equal to zero, and then you go ahead and separate your variables. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we subtract v to the other side and then divide by x, we'll get dv dx is equal to negative v over x. And then let's divide the v down here and multiply the dx to the other side. So that would then give us dv over v is equal to negative dx over x. So we're separated, now we can integrate like we do with first order, separable, right? So we integrate, that will give us then that ln of v is equal to negative ln of x plus, I'm going to put c1 here, it's just some constant, right? And if we then think about solving for v, take the exponential of both sides, we'll get that v is equal to e to the power of all this stuff over here, right? e to the negative ln x plus c1. We could go ahead and think of v here as e to the negative ln x times e to the c1, which would just be some constant times e to the negative ln of x. If we think of taking this negative and making it an exponent of negative 1 up there, then we actually get e to the ln of x to the minus 1, so this would also be known as c1 over x. So if our v is c1 over x, remember it's actually u that we wanted, right? And v is u prime. So what we need to do is actually integrate this to get u, right? So if u prime is c1 over x, then that means u is going to be the integral of c1 over x dx. This is just a log rule here, right? So we'll get c1 ln x. We'll get another constant though, right? We'll get something like c2. And remember our initial statement. We said in our reduction of order, we said our solution is going to be u times y1, right? So if I take my u here and I multiply it by my y1, and remember my y1 at the very beginning of the problem was 1 over x, well then our solution for this problem will be y equals this times 1 over x, which will be c1 ln x over x plus c2 over x. So let's give you a little outline of the method here. So for our reduction of order, if you know some y1 is a solution for the second order equation, you make the substitution y equals u times y1, that thing you know. You find y prime, you find y double prime, you plug all that into the differential equation. Then you'll simplify, you should figure out that there are no more u terms, only u prime and u double prime terms should be left. Then we make a substitution of v equals u prime. This is going to reduce your second order equation to a first order equation. If you started with a homogeneous equation, remember it will be separable. If you started with a non-homogeneous equation, then it will be a linear equation. 
you're going to solve for v using one of these first order methods, so make sure you're good with separable and linear first order equations. Once you have v, remember that's your u prime, so to get your u you'll have to integrate to get the u. That tells you what the rest of your solution is. All right, we've got a couple of videos following this in our series. We have an additional homogeneous example with reduction of order. We also have a video that does a non-homogeneous example of reduction of order. You can check those out, and hopefully this gives you a good start to your reduction of order for second order equations. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.